Congratulations! You completed the Creational Design Pattern section. Here is a recap of all the topics we covered. We looked at all five Creational Design Patterns from the Gang of Four and identified the intent of each pattern. The Abstract Factory Pattern creates families of related or dependent objects. The Builder Pattern constructs a family of complex objects in multiple steps. The Factory Method Pattern creates objects and lets factory subclasses decide which class to instantiate. The Prototype Pattern constructs objects by copying a prototype and modifying the copy. And the singleton pattern ensures that a class has only one instance. We also talked about when to implement these patterns. You implement the abstract factory pattern when your objects can be grouped into a hierarchy that encapsulates several distinct platforms, each consisting of a suite of related objects. You implement the builder pattern when your objects can be grouped into sets that differ only by the permutation of their internal parts, and if the construction process consists of a number of discrete steps. You implement the factory method pattern when your object creation code sometimes needs to return a subclass or reuse an existing object. You implement the prototype pattern if your object initialization is very expensive and all objects share a common generic template. And you implement the singleton pattern when you want to ensure global access to a single instance of a class. OK, let's summarize these patterns one by one. So you use the abstract factory design pattern to create families of related objects. The calling code uses the factory to create objects. It never instantiates objects directly, and it doesn't need to know the exact type of the object being created by the factory. You can implement the construction codes of the abstract factory with a builder or prototype pattern. You can also implement the abstract factory as a singleton if you want. And sometimes you can use an abstract factory in place of a facade. The Builder Pattern provides an interface for constructing a family of complex objects in multiple steps. You use it if your objects can be grouped into sets that differ only by the permutation of their internal parts, and if the construction process consists of a number of discrete steps. You can implement the construction codes of the builder with a prototype or factory pattern. And it's perfectly fine to migrate from a factory method pattern to a builder or prototype pattern as your code evolves. The factory method pattern provides an interface for creating objects but the subclasses decide which class to instantiate. You use this pattern if your object creation code sometimes needs to return a subclass or maybe reuse an existing object. And again, it's perfectly fine to migrate from the factory method pattern to a builder or prototype pattern as your code evolves. The prototype pattern provides an interface for constructing objects by copying a prototype and modifying the copy. Use this pattern if your object initialization is expensive 
and all objects share a common generic template. We also learned that you should not use the iClonable interface in public code, because Microsoft never actually defined if it should make a shallow or a deep copy. And finally, the singleton pattern. It provides an interface for ensuring that a class has only one instance. Use it to ensure global access to that single instance. The advantage of a singleton pattern over a global variable is that you can later change your mind and actually increase the number of instances. But be very careful with this pattern. Singletons are just fancy global variables and should be used very sparingly. OK, are you ready for the quiz? Let's get started and test your knowledge of creational design patterns.